Hello, everybody, and welcome to our latest Dev Talk. Uh, we're just going to give it a minute here and allow uh, for some people to jump on the call, and then we'll be underway with the Savannah Data Services Sandbox with Robin West. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. This is Stacy Kruzik from the Zebra Developer Relations team. Welcome today to our latest Dev Talk. Just wanted to kick it off with a couple of items and a few housekeeping rules. First of all, we are entering our last event for App Forum. App Forum 2019 Elevating Enterprise Intelligence. Our last event is going to be held in Las Vegas at Caesars Palace, and we're hoping that you can join us. We are still um, open it's still open registration right now um, the events taking place the first and second of October and we encourage you to take a look at our website um, and take a, review the information about all of the sessions developer and thought leadership sessions it's going to be an incredible event and we really hope that you can all join us as always if you want to join our developer community we encourage you to do so at developer.zebra.com and for today's Dev Talk, uh, Robin West will be presenting. Um, but as a few housekeeping rules, just wanted to remind everybody that we're going to go ahead and hold the questions till the end of the webinar. You can go ahead and type those questions in the questions tab on your screen. And we'll go ahead and address those towards the end. And with that, I am going to kick it off and turn it over to Robin. Thanks so much, Robin. Thank you so much, Stacy. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about Savannah. We kicked it off a few weeks ago uh, at the um, European event and again at the uh, Sydney and Beijing events for App Forum. Um, we also had a, a initial dev talk a few weeks back on what is Savannah, how does it work, what are we doing here. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm going to dig deeper into um, some of the more interesting pieces of Savannah as far as how you can actually work with the Zebra team and actually to build out what we're actually providing. Um, we're still early days and we're still trying to get a lot of feedback from the community. So this is going to talk to us a little bit about what that is and how you can work with us. So what is Savannah? Or, you know, we've got a few things that we're going to go over. What is Savannah? I know if most of you guys have probably seen a little bit about it, but just in case you haven't, I want to go over a little bit of it um, and then we're going to go over how to collaborate, where do you find the information about it, and um, we'll do a few demos to just sort of bring that all together so you could see what it is that we're doing. So what is Savannah? Um, Savannah is a big term that Zebra uses for a lot of different things. Um, we have a lot of different products that we call Savannah or we call Powered by Savannah. And those are a lot of our cloud services and our um, basically cross zebra services that we have and, and different tool sets that we have as well as solutions. Um, so if you've you know, looked at the zebra website, you might see things like smart pack and smart lens and the location engine, um, as well as the data services. And these are different you know, tools that zebra has that go across the, the company and our cloud based uh, applications and services um, that are really, you know, the, the encompass what, what Savannah is. Um, what we're going to be talking about specifically and what we've, you know, launched more recently is the data services aspect to it. Um, so, you know, from a very, very simplified standpoint, um, essentially our data services are cloud APIs, web APIs, um, pretty standard uh, things that are, are being offered there. Um, we do have, you know, a pretty standard uh, REST endpoints as well as webhooks, which are Again, standards based and um, should be pretty much in line with different types of services like that. But how we differentiate from other data service providers 
is, um, you know, one of the main components to it is providing access to the data generated through Zebra devices, um, both device data itself, like, um, you know, device health and, and settings and that sort of thing on the different Zebra devices that we have, but it also includes uh, the data that's flowing through those devices. Uh, so scan data and print jobs and um, RFID reads as well as the, the health of those devices. Um, and then adding to that, um, bring in additional cloud-based services and analytics. Um, and these are, are matched up with that, those device data pieces to provide a lot of additional um, functionality and value. Um, and I'll go through some of that as, as we go through this discussion. But that's, uh, you know, the core of what Savannah Data Services is, is utilizing our, our direct activity with the devices and adding, you know, additional, additional value, additional functionality on top of that through these cloud-based services. Um, some of the solutions that can be enabled through Savannah, um, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about some of the big things that can be done, but some of the more basic functionality is just basic scanning, printing, uh, reading, you know, in the cloud, which, you know, if, if any of you have seen some of our previous conversations around uh, some of these things like printing and RFID reading, they oftentimes, you know, if without Savannah, require a lot of additional infrastructure and a lot of additional work to set up and are, you know, just not as easy to work with as we, you know, as we would like to see. So using Savannah, we're actually simplifying that quite a bit. We're taking a lot of that infrastructure cost and from a, a time as well as, as, you know, actual cost off of your hands um, and hosting a lot of that infrastructure ourselves in order to pull that burden away from you. Um, but some of the, the additional things that we're doing with Savannah, are adding on top of those, those basic functionality. Um, so things like food and pharma traceability, taking things like printing and scanning and reading of RFID tags and GS1 tags, um, and uh, adding that to um, blockchain and adding that to some of the other um, informational uh, services that we have to provide things like you know, food and pharma tra traceability, um, to, to add that to your applications. Um, so these are just services that we're opening up. You still have to, you know, add that, you know, that capabilities within your applications, but we're providing the service that sort of mashes up those two things. Um, things like in retail, being able to do um, analytics off of the, um, you know, information coming into the scanners as far as what products are being sold and how they're being sold and where they're being sold. Um, as well as, you know, where people are in the store, where product is in the store, um, and being able to do a lot of analytics off of that, um, as well as just being able to look up the current state of that product within that space. Um, those are some of the things that we're offering in, in, in the retail space, as well as in healthcare, a lot of those same things are, uh, are functionally, you know, important, as well as even warehouse. Um, being able to look up what the product is, where it is, and those different things are all useful in those different spaces and are part of the services that we're, we're going to be offering and are offering in some, in some circumstances, um, as well as the basic device management that, you know, we can offer through just the device connectivity that we have. So these are some of the things that we're looking at. And part of the thing that I wanted to talk to everyone about and make sure that is, is clear is, these are just some of the things that we are thinking about, that we are, you know, considering and that we've seen as almost low-hanging fruit for us to be able to uh, pursue with you or, or help you to pursue um, based on, you know, the information that we're able to gather. But we don't know a lot of the use cases that are going to be coming out. We don't know how you are utilizing the, you know, the different products in your use cases and where you'd want to actually see us go with this. Um, what additional information and data that you'd actually like to be pulling in. Um, so that's kind of where this whole idea of the sandbox comes into play. Um, I'm going to dig into this a little bit deeper as we go through this, this conversation. 
But the Svela sign box has three primary components to it. Um, it starts off with this concept of ideas. So these are essentially ideas that you've shared or that we're sharing with you to, um, you know, as far as what services you'd like to see for, and, and what services we, you know, we think would be good ideas, but we're not sure. Uh, we want some feedback on it. Um, and we also want you guys to um, start inputting your ideas and, and giving us ideas for what you'd like to see from services from us. Um, you know, that's the, the ideas that are submitted there are publicly available, um, at least publicly viewable, um, and different people can vote on which ones they like, um, as well as give comments on, on what they, uh, you know, what portions of it are important and or how to refine it a little bit better. Um, so that's just sort of the first portion of that, um, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. And then the next portion is the idea of concepts, and these are essentially just mocked out Swagger APIs. Um, so these are, are, you know, APIs or um, just mocked out APIs that we've got that we're posting out there, again, to get additional feedback from the community and make sure that the 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 concept that we're you know we're posting is actually what it was that you were thinking about um, and then we have the prototypes which are essentially pretty functional apis um, and the the posting the documentation the swagger on that as well they're, they're fairly functional apis that we're still refining um, in in multiple different ways but again we're still looking for feedback on that um, so there's a bunch of different ways of, of handling that, but it's all actually available within the portal, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So I'm going to actually end our wonderful show here and pull up the developer portal. So I am logged into our wonderful um, developer portal, and this is developer.zebra.com. And I'm logged in as, as a standard user like you, so <laughs> uh, I'll be seeing right here what you guys will be seeing. Um, and we have a bunch of different areas of this portal. If, if no one's ever been here, and I'm hoping that most of you have, but if, if no one's ever been here, this is our primary place for uh, pretty much all of the different development tools that uh, Zebra provides to our, our community uh, of you guys as software developers. Um, and this includes native APIs as well as the web APIs that we have um, for pretty much every product across the board that Zebra has. Um, and it, it covers a lot of different things. Um, but we have a the section in here for Savannah Data Services um, that has a bunch of different you know, pieces and components to it. The, the, you know, in one of my previous uh, dev talks, which I hope you guys will take a look at, I show how to get an API key. I'm not gonna show that in this particular um, session, but basically one of the first things that you're gonna need to do in order to start working with these APIs is to get an API key. So there's um, documentation in the help menu for it, as well as there's the um, previous dev talk where we go through how to actually get that key. Um, but if you look in here, you'll see um, there are several APIs that are, these are essentially the ones that are, you know, fully published and available, um, that are fully tested and are essentially our production APIs. Um, not a huge amount right now, we're still building this out. Um, and in the coming months, you'll, you'll start seeing more and more added to, to this list. Um, but for right now, we're still working through the, you know, the getting more and more added to it. And that's where you guys come in to help us actually, you know, build this out and, and start working with us to, you know, get more added to this as far as full production APIs. Um, that's where the sandbox comes in. Um, so go through some uh, basic information as far as an overview of what the sandbox is, pretty simple stuff. Um, but if you look, there's a couple of different sections in here. The ideas, this is where you can actually submit ideas to us. Um, there's a number of things in here from like ID parser, which can be voted on. You can vote up and down on these. So say I want to vote up on this. Um, it tells you basically what, what it is that uh, the desired behavior is, what data comes, you know, you're 
wanting to have come in, what data you're expecting to get out of it. Um, and if you actually click through one of these, you can add comments to here to tell us more information or refine the information or refine the ideas or help others to refine the ideas um, so that we have that sort of running account of, of feedback from the community as far as what um, you guys want to see from us. And in order to submit a new idea, um, that's basically you can come in here and submit a new idea. Give it a title, put in some description, um, you know, what data you want to have coming in, what data you want to go out. And then, of course, uh, you know, wonderful uh, uh, IP uh, terms <laughs> for, you know, just letting us, you know, if you submit it to us, you're, of course, letting us actually have that as an idea. Um, if you would like to submit something that you do not want to have necessarily publicly available, um, you can essentially uh, contact us by submitting a form request to say, hey, I've got an idea, but I don't want to post it. And we will, you know, reach out to you directly to, you know, work with you on it. Um, so that would be something that you just submit into the community forums to let us know that you have something that you don't necessarily want to submit out to the public, although you will get better feedback if it's something that you think would be useful to more than just you. Um, and we'll be able to get better feedback if it is submitted out there. So we prefer it um, if it is submitted into this idea, uh, idea uh, section. Um, once it's been submitted as an idea, and let's take a look here. There's one in here for a warehouse activity heat map. Um, there's a few others in here. There's, you know, we're still looking for, for the community to continue to add more in here. Um, but if we take a look, this is an idea that was submitted a little while back. And now we're going to take a look at the concepts. And sure enough, we actually did, um, you know, take that idea and create a, a mocked out swagger for it. Um, there's a number of other ones in here for different eventing types of uh, APIs. These are more webhooks than anything else, but these are basically setting up subscriptions to get different events from the different devices that we have. Um, and uh, for RFID readers, we have a management API, um, RFID encoder decoder, um, and these are great for, um, you, you know, if you've got GS1 barcodes and you want to create an RFID tag out of it, or if you have an RFID tag and you want to be able to decode that um, or encode it in different formats, then that API is great for that. There's a lot of actually details with the GS1 one, um, a lot of different ways of manipulating uh, that uh, that tag, tag data um, in order to create a good encoded uh, GS1 tag. Um, and then there's the warehouse heat map, which we saw in the ideation section. Um, and this gives you the ability to, you know, create different like sites and um, have events that are um, happening on that uh, on that site and then have that sort of map of where that is so this is the uh, uh, this is a mocked out api we don't actually have any real back end here but if you do click into any of these you can actually run through this and it'll give you an, a valid response. It's not a great response, but it gives you a valid response. It's something that you can take a look at and help us actually ideate on. Um, so if you want to take a look, I've got my postman up here and I can run this same API in postman and get a list of the warehouse heat map sites. I can get a specific site. Oh, unfortunately that's not working. Um, primarily because there's, um, you know, the date formats aren't coming in right. Um, but it's at least giving you some information to show that, hey, there's something here um, and you can start working with it. Um, I also pulled up some information on the uh, warehouse heat map and Taking a look at the RFID reader management, um, there's a lot of different components to this from looking at the device health, which is the reader device, um, different settings for actually doing reading, um, you know, device settings, actions, how to set up the cloud um, interface, 
for Savannah. Um, and if we take a look at that within Postman, um, I'm going to take a look here and get the reader health. I'm pulling that up. Now, I'm hoping that most of you guys are familiar with Postman for doing, um, for working with APIs. If not, it's a really, really great tool. Um, it's free and uh, you just have to sign up for it. It's a really great tool for being able to actually work with APIs, play around with them, get a feel for what they're going to do, test them. Um, and then it has some, some pretty cool features where, say I wanted to get some code to work with it on an iOS device. Um, I can actually generate some code to have it um, to go into my iOS code to run this particular uh, request. And say I wanted to then switch to C-sharp and add this code to my um, C-sharp app and have it run the same request. So this does have a lot of uh, functionality to it that is really, really helpful <laughs> when you are working with these different APIs. Um, and this is not just a Zebra thing. <laughs> this is a pretty standard tool set. But I wanted to make you guys aware, if, if any of you have not worked with this tool before, how useful it is. Um, so now that we've taken a look at the um, at the uh, the concepts, now we're going to take a look at some of the prototypes. Um, we have a few prototypes up here. These are fully functional APIs that have you know we're still just ideating on for one reason or another, um, and that you can probably expect to see in the production environment um, relatively quickly and relatively soon. Um, you know, we, we're not giving any sort of specific roadmap for you, but these are still things that we're looking for uh, feedback from the community on. Um, so things like the printer's print uh, right now, the one major limitation to it is that it's, uh, it's not multi-tenant. So basically, if you put your printer up on the printer's print API, uh, if you connect your printer up, uh, everyone will be able to see that printer and be able to work with it. Um, you know, for for testing and doing basic development, that works fine. Um, but once you're actually starting to go into more production setting, that's not going to be useful. So that's one that is you know likely to go into production on a fairly quick basis. Um, we also have uh, APIs for battery prediction, which um, I'm going to show you right here. Basically, um, it's it's going to be using a mobile computer, and you basically give it the uh, serial number of the mobile computer, and are able to get uh, information about the battery for it, um, as well as different information around um, you know where it is from the standpoint of uh, you know its its health. So. I don't have a mobile computer hooked up to this right now, but this is one of the, the ones that we have that is, is useful and that you might be able to play around with um, with your own mobile computer. Um, I am going to show you a little bit around ID parser and printers print. Um, so printers print has some information on how to actually hook your printer up to it, as well as a couple of APIs here. Um, you're getting available printers is your uh, getting you know basically a list of printers that are currently connected once it's in the multi-tenant state this will give you your list of, of printers that you have access to um, but right now it's going to give you the list of all printers that are connected up to savannah um, and you can pull down printer details for that particular printer and sending print jobs it's pretty basic but um, it gives you a feel for what we're doing on this particular api and opens it up to get feedback from you as far as what you'd like to see to um, bring this further into production. Um, and then there's also the ID parser, which again is something that we're still building out. Um, this has a, a United States uh, driver's license parser as well as a passport parser. Um, some of the things that you could think about it are around, okay, we can parse the par passport, but what about doing validation? Um, you know, validating that that passport is is valid, or validating that the driver's license is you know is not suspended. Those are some ideas that we could use from you. Are those things that you guys want to see? Um, you know, just let us know in the forums, and you know we could take that feedback in and build out these APIs. Um, 
or you can submit them as, as questions in this dev talk as well. Um, but these are things that we, you know, we've got the parser. We want to know what what more would you like to see off of this? Um, so I'm going to actually pull up Postman again and pull up my get printers. I'm going to send this out there. And this is actually going to pull up a list of printers that are currently connected and or might have at one point been connected to this service over the last month or so that we've had, uh, you know, that we before, you know, since we've done a refresh on it. Um, so right now it's showing that there is online a ZD620 and it's showing there's online a QLM320 and it's going to show a bunch of other printers that are currently offline um, that you know maybe at one point were connected but aren't connected anymore. Um, there's a total of I think 13, yep, total 13 on here. Um, this printer here is actually the printer that is at my office. I'm gonna show the webcam so you can see my wonderful printer. Um, and then there is uh, another printer that is in California. So if I take a look here, I can run uh, this query on the printer that is in California. And this is gonna give me a lot of information about that printer. Um, this is gonna give me not just the, the current state of it, so it's saying that it's online, it's all good. Um, it's going to, uh, tell me the current odometers. It's going to also give me nearly every setting in the printer. Um, if you actually look at the scroll bar here, it's uh, hard to see, but there's a ton of information that this particular API is responding to. It's not only giving you the current setting, but it's also telling you the actual range of what that setting might be um, and a bunch of other information that you know you might find useful. Um, a lot of it's probably not going to be useful, um, but if you you know if you want to figure out what is happening with a printer that's in a in a problematic state, or you want to figure out you know what settings you can change and what you can't, um, this is a pretty useful uh, API to take a look at it with. Um, and this is one that's currently in California. I'm in Chicago. This is in California. Completely separate networks. Um, but they're both connected up to Savannah, so you know I have access to it. Um, think about this from the standpoint of your applications. You know, um, you don't always know where your customers are going to be running their applications, and you know if you want to, you know, have your application print to you know their different printers, um, being able to have all of them connected up to you know a, a single service and be able to access them all might be pretty useful to you. Um, and or there's, there's actually within this API, there are a bunch of different filters and other mechanisms that you can work with on it. So I'm gonna get available printers. So there's a bunch of different filters that you can add to that API. So you can filter it on different tags that you could add to it. Um, you can do different sorting. Um, and then you can actually also paginate the list that comes back if you've got, you know say thousands of printers connected up. That's not what I wanted to do. Kill that. Um, so this is one of the basic things that you can work with it on. Um, and I'm going to run this on the printer that I have in front of me here. Um, so you can see it's showing everything seems to be pretty good on it. But say I open up the print head on this particular printer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and send that, it's going to show that there's actually a issue with that printer. Actually, it's a little bit easier to see it on the list. So I'm gonna pull that up and I can actually see the error a little bit better on here. Um, so it shows that the printer is paused and that the print head is open on this particular printer. And if I then close it again, I have to unpause it and send that same thing again and it shows we're all good again um, so it's showing in in essentially in pretty close to real time 
the current state of, of each of the printers that are connected up. Once you know the current state of it, then you can start worrying about, you know, do you actually want to print to it? Um, I'm playing around with some ZPL in here uh, using uh, this particular in printer in front of me. I want to print something basic to it. And it shows a wonderful hello world. I can go ahead and change this and say, hello, hello dub talk. Send that over to the printer and it prints that out as well. This API is primarily a send and forget. So it's, it's going to give you a 200 status if it um, ended up you know, getting to the printer. Um, it's not going to really verify that the print job completed correctly. Uh, if the printer is offline, you'll get an error message back. Um, like a, I think it's a 500 that you'll get back. Um, if the printer is say out of paper, it's still gonna actually say successfully sent it um, because it did successfully send it to the printer. Um, when you put more paper back in the printer and you clear that error state, um, most of the time it will actually then end up printing your, uh, your, uh, your contents. Um, if the printer's offline and you send it, um, generally speaking, it's still gonna queue up the print job to the printer. And when you put the printer back online, it will actually um, oftentimes then, you know, print the, uh, the contents of the queue that is in the cloud for, this particular, for that particular printer. Um, and it's doing it all off of the serial number of the printer, which you see in the URL up here. So um, the other one that I wanted to take a peek at was the driver's license. Uh, this is an old driver's license of mine um, that I've modified the date a little bit on. Um, but this is basically in the in the sandbox uh, driver's license parser. Um, I'm sending it as raw JSON data. Um, input payload is the standard in here. And I'll show you how that kind of comes out in the, in the API in the documentation. So yeah, it's pretty simple, but you have your input payload in there. And that's where you send the, essentially the scan of the uh, PDF 417 on the back of the card um, and or the, uh, the three layer uh, uh, mag, <laughs> mag stripe on them as well would, would be able to fit in and would be able to be put into here. And if you've ever tried to actually work with a, a US driver's license, each state actually encodes the information in the driver's license differently, um, which can make it a real pain if you're actually trying to decode and get the right information from that. Um, so this, um, this particular parser can be pretty useful because it gives you a pretty standard model of the, the data that is um, in most driver's licenses and um, gives you that sort of information back uh, in, a, in a standardized model that you can utilize across different states. Um, we also have a similar parser for um, international uh, passports as well. We're still trying to actually make sure that one of the pieces of feedback we're looking at is trying to make sure that the different passport um, uh, possibilities out there that our parser actually works for them. Um, you know, we've tried out a whole bunch of different passports but, um, and we've you know, verified that those work, but we're not 100% sure that every country actually encodes their passport the exact same. So that's one of the things that we're trying to get feedback on is making sure that our passport uh, decoder actually uh, works properly across all passports. Um, so those are another piece, you know, another types of uh, feedback that we're trying to get from the community um, and that we were encouraging you to post as, as forum posts in, in, the, uh, in the developer portal. So now I have covered all of the, you know, the, the different things that I was gonna show as far as my demo. Um, and I encourage you to take a look through here, play around with some of the stuff, give us feedback um, and let us know how we can improve these and what new ideas you might have for uh, what things that we can do to improve on, on the APIs that we have. Um, so I'm going to open it up for questions and see if anyone has any, any thoughts or questions that they'd like to answer. 
if you have a question or a thing, something that you want to submit as an idea uh, privately, just post that in there and say, you know, API idea or something like that. Um, but please feel free to uh, post a question in there. Thanks, Robin. We're just waiting for people to post right now. So if you have anything you want to ask Robin, please let us know. Any other questions about Savannah, I, I'd be happy to answer as well as much as I can. Um, and we'll you know, be able to get you some feedback on that as well. Okay, folks, if there's no other questions, Robin, any closing uh, well, remarks? <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining, and I hope that you guys got some good uh, value out of this. Let us know, um, and uh, please join us for our next Dev Talk uh, next month. And please don't forget to join our community so you can be updated on all of our events, webinars, and news at developer.zebra.com. And with that, we hope everything, everybody has a great day today.